Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to my channel, Deb Chanel's 48's World, and happy Martin Luther King birthday, yes, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday to ya, happy birthday MLK, okay Junior, alright, so we're all here at the house, some of us are uh, at work, working their butts off, and then we have ones like me, had the opportunity to basically be at home today, relax, chill, and just get into the relaxation mode. But I chose to definitely get on my YouTube channel and just start popping, popping, popping out those videos. Uh, as you definitely can see that I am definitely trying to do. All right, but we're going to get on into this story because I was tired last night. I ain't going to lie. That darn boring show that they gave us for season uh, 12, episode 12, was just like, oh my goodness, where are we actually going with all of this? Why are we doing all of this? And it just is what it is. But I wanted to touch a little bit base back on uh, Dennis and Portia and why did she sit here to have this family dinner on how Dennis is going to treat her right within their family okay and she wants Dennis to pretty much be like dogged out today uh, on this particular platform uh, of a showing of an episode that um, Real Housewives of Atlanta gave us and to me I don't care what Dennis sit there and say his whole demeanor his facial expressions his body language is just really telling me it's a telltale sign that basically what he's going to be doing <laughs> is what he's always been done and doing in the past. He's going to keep on trekking, 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 doing what he want to do whenever he feel like he wants to do it. He don't maybe intentionally want to get caught, or maybe he do. It's a select uh, story that will be put out on social media, and it would trend, and it would give Portia something to talk about as far as a storyline. But then, you know, sometimes you have to be cautious on the storyline part and what is it really doing to you all's relationship so like i said to me it just seems like dennis just be high drunk all the time just my perspective even in the pictures it'd be like where are we going with this and why he don't always to me every time i look at him unless he has his glasses on and he's dressed up or whatnot he doesn't look like he is uh, with us. He feels, it seems like he's in a haze or in a euphoric type high state. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> like there, it seemed like he just, uh, when he was going to that counseling session, he seemed like he was over it. He needed a drink. He needed something to pep him up. He seemed like he had a headache in that particular clip. And just the ones that we actually got a chance to show on this previous Sunday, like that one. He looked like he was just drunk. He was out of it. He didn't want the foolishness. He was just into his brown liquor. And he just wanted to get this situation over with. He wanted to have a, a fair playing field that's why he asked his mom to come over and intervene on his behalf because he ain't used to being with a lot of ladies and this and that and the third personally i think he was really rooting for a little boy to kind of break some of the monotony of all that estrogen running around that house he wanted to be a buddied up he needed some more testosterone up in there not saying that he don't love his little girl as much as he possibly can love a child but I, to me i think he really wanted a boy you know what i'm saying but it just is what it is he might have a little tomboy and little pj anyway okay she might love her daddy you know how they always say the boy loves the mother and the uh, daughter loves the dad uh, just how it is, just how it's always been, the camaraderie and stuff. But, child, honey, when PJ grows up, she might be on her daddy's side all the time and probably be telling him, look, daddy, you better not be messing up on mama, but I got your back either way. <laughs> I can see she being up there because she seems like when she be having some of her photos, little PJ don't be with that mess. She's like, just get that camera on out of my face now. That's your life. That ain't my life. Where my dad is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So PJ always already is set to kind of mimic more so her daddy ways than Portia ways. Okay? Because even when she be playing, she be serious. You know, like, don't bother me. Go on away. You know, you can 
tape me, but don't let me know you taping me type of situation or scenario. I love that little girl, PJ. But anyway, uh, going back to the story that Yahoo.com had put out on Portia and the whole scenes that they were giving us for Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 12, Episode 12, they got a little bit more in-depth. So let's go and read a little bit, fam, and see if we can get some type of edification, some type of understanding where we can wrap our minds around what Portia called herself doing on her taping of last night. Because to me... Ain't no way in the world I'm going to have my family sit up at the table and grill my boyfriend, a fiancé, a husband. That's something that I'm going to do on my own. And if you don't see him with me, it's because we got some issues going on. He don't deserve to be in the midst of my happiness, of my extended family, such as my um, birth family. He don't have the rights to eat any of the good food, have any of the good conversation because he's been filed like that. So technically, how Portia said she put him in a doghouse, he would have still been in a doghouse or hanging out there with his mama or whatnot. Uh, because Portia had some little things to say about Miss Gina, which is Dennis's mom, but she didn't reach out to her when her son had put her through this little negative situation and she was hoping that she would have heard from her but you know miss diane i mean not miss diane miss gina um uh, was saying you know for lack of a better word of her expressing herself it's pretty much like she wanted to say i hell i was embarrassed i was embarrassed because i didn't raise dennis to be that way acting like a little dog right here sticking his you know thing and everybody and anything and you know he was wrong he was wrong and I got on his ass from sun up to sun down daily about what he was doing and we definitely had our talks and then Dennis had um revealed that yes his mom did get on him and you know acting like a little spoiled little boy you know uh saying yeah his mama got on him he know he was wrong but he did then anyway. you know what i'm saying because pretty much it's like you did it anyway you threw caution to the wind you were hoping that you didn't get uh called out about it or, or found out about it and you thought it was going to be under the radar but no it got out we found out about it you heard portion it might not have been with that sincerely war uh person that they was trying to put you off on uh, and then it could have been Portia just a good liar and just said no, it wasn't her, but it was somebody. You know what I'm saying? Just to kind of bring down the uh, drama out there that was trending on social media. But, again, that tells me a lot about Portia constantly wanting her family to be involved, whether it's with Dennis' mom or whatnot. But, she, you know, she said she got on to him and Portia had said, you know, I'm glad you did, but, you know, you could have called me and told me that you were getting on him. That would have made me feel a little better. And I was like, why, Portia? Why? Because think about the headache and the pain and the frustration Dennis put his mama through just growing up with the stupidness and shit he probably was doing. She done had her feel. She trying to throw him off on you as much as possible, but she wants him to get that prenup so he don't come crawling back to her when things don't work out with you and him trying to think she's going to be one up and give him some money. No, that ain't what mama trying to do. She trying to give him to you as much as possible so she don't have to necessarily be bothered with uh dennis and his foolishness and and then destroying the empire that she helped him build you understand what i'm saying she, she trying mama gina trying to retire okay she could care one flip flap of a hill being whether you and dennis marriage work or y'all relationship work she don't give a shit okay she's trying to protect herself her interests so she don't have to get this man none of her money okay when all done and said she wants to protect herself and what she has put out there in this little conglomerate of a business adventure she's winning into with her son. That's Miss Gina plight all day, all day, all day long, okay? So she ain't necessarily looking at her son's best interest. She's looking at her interest and how she has incorporated herself in that hot dog factory. And she don't got too close to retirement where she ain't finna let you or no woman come in and take what she held build. Okay, and that's just that's just facts right there. How y'all see it in these days. That is just correct information. Whether she knows how to express it to you in a, a, a normal a uh, conversation piece where you will understand it or what she had to get hood, which it don't matter, okay? But he called his mama old that was trying to get, you know, her to have it a play, a uh, fair playing field in case 
uh, Portia Mama popped off on him too much or Lauren got her little slick dig then. You know, he wanted to have somebody else there. And I'm pretty sure if Dennis had a sister, he probably would have brought her on in there too. I don't know if he had a sister or he has a sister. Maybe he's the only child. Anybody that knows that information, put it down in the comments. Let me know. Because maybe the, the siblings just didn't want to get into the business of, you know, being involved in all that rhetoric that was going on. And Miss Gina, she just had all day, every day to make sure she's securing her bag. <laughs> But Lauren was over there. She wasn't hearing that shit. She was just like, man, what was you doing? You knew better. I ain't giving you a pass to say, oh, well, you know, he did it. He ain't going to do it no more. da da dee da 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 No, Lauren was getting in your ass. She was staying in that ass because she said, you knew better. I told you how I felt that my ex-husband did to me. Share that information with you. And you still turned around, did a 360, and got in somebody else's snatch while, you know, you knew you was together with Portia. Well, see, that's why I said, if the man is showing you who he is, and yes, y'all are just boyfriend and girlfriend slash fiance, girl, then he took your ring when he messed up. Who you think in charge over there, honey? That's his mama all day, every day. Okay, yes, honey, because if it didn't work, and it still may not work, uh, she was like, man, get that ring and take it back. Get whatever they will give it to you, put it back in your bank, and move on. That's what Miss Gina told her son. So, yeah, you weren't going to keep that ring regardless. And see, that's where you made your, your your worst mistake, your bad move. You should not have ever got that, given him back that ring. Then he lied, talking about he might have to upgrade. Well, then he didn't lie because he did put it in there. Uh, we might have to upgrade, meaning he didn't give it a finale or a final thought that he was going to do that. He was just thinking about that doing it. So I like girl please. You see Portia like Dennis because he's he kind of can be manipulated here and there until his mother catch some wind on what he's doing and she's like hell no we, we ain't finna do that. No we not. You better go like over there and tell her we ain't doing that. We ain't got five on it. Alright. We barely got a dollar on it but we damn sure ain't got five on it. So go back. We straighten it out and of course Portia gonna come back with some you know this that and third and she gonna go have a conversation with her mama about it. Miss Diane looking all cute over there trying to front like she really do care about Dennis. and no she don't care nobody about no Dennis. And, and lauren just giving her true tea i can take you or i can just put you aside it don't really matter my sister wants you i'm still looking at you from all facets of who you are i ain't giving you uh, that pass anymore i'm not even giving you 99 percent you looking like 10 percent right now you got to build up the other 90 to make that 100 because i'm just not with you dennis you looking like my ex my ex did the same thing to me. I'm just not foolish like my sister, okay? I ain't going back in that kind of camp. I just, you know, wait my turn out, find me a new prey out there, you know, get with him, and then we start anew. But I ain't going back. I ain't backtracking. I don't care if that is my baby girl's daddy, whatever. He will always be her daddy, whether I'm with him or not, okay? That is solidified. But I need my peace. I need my happiness. And I ain't like my sister, honey. I ain't like my sister. So she forgive you. I forgive you, too. But I ain't forgetting that damn thing. And I ain't got to be in your presence if I choose not to be. So Lauren was giving it up. She was serving it up for me. And I was really loving it. But anyway... We're going into the article about what Yahoo.com had to say about it because they have their own vlogging uh, site now and they, they tend to comment on salacious stories that are running out there on them social media streets, okay? But we have Dave Quinn. He was the article title list of this particular um, article he ran through his company. Uh, where he's an employee over there at Yahoo.com, little journals, little correspondence, and he wrote up a little article and published it on their platform. Okay, it goes on as a title to read, Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams, fiance Dennis McKinley, apologizes to her family for his infidelity. Okay, is he apologizing for the other infidelities he's going to be facing, or he's just this one? Now, this is my pun intended, not in this man article. I'm just being a little bitty. Okay. Because really, really or not, I do like Dennis just having a conversation with him or just listening to him talk when he do expresses his opinion on other matters that are not, not dealing with relationships and stuff. So I kind of see why um, Portia really likes him or takes 
to him because he seems like he's a very good sociable person he likes to have fun uh he's not a stuffy old you know businessman he can fluctuate but then that other side is what Portia should really be uh, investing and in, taking a longer look at that because sometimes some men just cannot be married they just love women to be loving women you know every time they see them they don't lust after them and in their mind they already don't probably have sex with them and everything you know to come so they'll be trying to see if they can conquer uh have that conquest of whatever um woman that they got their eye on at that particular time yes i know so then it's just maybe who he is. You're either going to love him, put him, put up with all his flaws, his infidelities and stuff. Because there are going to be many more. Because he's not really showing me, uh, by me looking at him, that he's going to change. His body language doesn't say it. His facial expression doesn't say it. He's like, to me, it's like, damn, I got caught. Damn, how am I going to keep this out of social media if I get my other urges again. I'm going to have to work on this. That's what he was giving me. But getting on back into the article, it says, Dennis McKinley took a big step in repairing his relationship with Portia Williams on Sunday's episode, which we did see on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. After admitting to cheating on Williams while she was pregnant with their first child, daughter Pilla Johanna, who was born in March, the hot dog restaurant owner has been working to rebuild trust with Williams going to couples therapy sessions and slowly providing his lawyer to her and my thing like that you know because that old adage once a cheater always a cheater and I think that is uh fluidly true because if the person don't recognize what they're doing the one who's uh, committing their infractions they're not gonna uh accept it they're not gonna acknowledge it and they're gonna continue into that bad behavior now see one thing I didn't like about Dennis when confronted that he had been cheating allegedly he said no it wasn't him it wasn't he didn't do that kind of thing he wouldn't have ever done that to Porsche didn't come out later on sometime down the road that yeah he did commit this uh infraction he did cheat on her so he's not only a cheater he's a liar so you know what I'm saying the two just don't go together or they shouldn't be together I mean if you're gonna be a cheater just admit to your faults when somebody tries to catch you or uh, come to you to see if you actually did commit that act. Go and tell the truth. You know, because then at least you won't be a liar. You might be a cheater, but, you know, it could be an addiction for you, and we probably can work things out with getting you counseling or whatnot. But if you're going to be a cheater and a liar, child, please, you got too much going on. You got too much going on for me. But anyway, um, going back to the article, it said... His actions and many romantic gestures finally paid off on last week's episode when Williams agreed to marry him again. When McKinley re proposing to her with the same engagement ring, but before she was ready to cheer, McKinley had to do something first, apologize to her sister, Lauren, and her mother, Diane. Now, as we saw on that episode of him coming to Toronto, Canada, she did forgive him. She said, yes, she would take him back into the fold. It wasn't a thing where it was a tiebreaker if he didn't admit what he did to his family meaning her sister Lauren and her mother Diane and I'm pretty sure the mother already knew Dennis mother knew what he was doing and she said she chastised him off camera and that's how it needed to be she wasn't going to chastise her son on camera but it just is what it is so to me it's like Portia going to take anything this man give to her just long as she thinks she's securing the bag because, like I said, Dennis can be manipulated to a certain degree, but when he feels like he needs reinforcement, he does run to his mom. Now, I don't know what a 30-something-year-old, a uh, 40-something-year-old man running to his mom to pull him out of instances. I don't know what that tells about him, his manhood, but it doesn't look really cool in my eyes or positive in any way. But going back to the article, it says, Dennis sitting down with his mom and my sister's a chance for him to really put his money where his mouth is. Williams explained to viewers, this is a time to look them in the eyes and let them know he understands what he did to his family. He needs to have an opportunity to take full accountability, she added. Taking McKinley, you are doing very good. We are on the right track. But it's still doesn't change the fact that you caused this. Just remember that. Uh, the apology was especially necessary for Diane and Lauren, who had blocked McKinley's number after learning about his infidelity. Lauren was the Lauren was the most on guard. Williams explained, she feels like my sister loves you, but you cheated on her while she was pregnant. 
that to her is something she wants to understand. It's so serious and cannot happen again. Now, my deal with that, uh, Lauren basically shouldn't even say anything. That was her viewpoint. That was her opinion on the matter, but it really shouldn't have been said because Dennis is not dating her. He's not trying to marry Lauren. He's not trying to have a family with Lauren. That situation is strictly between Portia and Dennis. Even the mom didn't really have too much to say. Unless Dennis asked her opinion, then she could have uh, sponsored it and gave all that she felt she, you know, he had did to hurt her daughter and this, that, and the third. But again, it wasn't really necessary because this man could still turn around, apologize to them, and go out and do the same thing. And then, you know, what then, of course, you're going to have another meeting of the minds with the family for him to come back and say, oops, I slipped up. I did it again. You know, I was just kind of crazy. And I understand why poor she even felt like she needed to do that. But... As y'all can see, it took place. People said what they had to say, meaning Diane and uh, Lauren. And it's just either what it is. Poor she either going to stay with the man that's a cheater and a liar or she not. You know what I'm saying? I don't think the best that Diane and Lauren can hope for is that they can continue to have a relationship with the, the daughter, <laughs> their niece and her granddaughter. That's basically it. All right. But anyway, going back to the article, it says, so how did McKinley do? He began on the right path by owning up to what he did. We really couldn't get to this point without y'all helping with PJ, so I really appreciate that. Dennis is thanking them for being a babysitter and a caregiver while he couldn't actually come around because he felt so bad or he knew he would be, you know, uh, a grave would be dug for him about 15, 16, 18 feet, and he had to go lay in it for a while, and he didn't feel like digging himself back out. So he kind of, like, escaped that torture, but he knew if he wanted to still pursue Portia, then he had to come to some meetings on the minds and come around and apologize and then go on by his business. But, you know, Portia was trying to make it be, like, the be-all, it-all thing, when in her mind she was thinking that, but in her Heart. She was like, I'm going to be with this man regardless. You know what I'm saying? Regardless, if he tap my heart up again, I'm going to still be there. Okay? At least that's the take that I got out of it. But going back to the article, um, uh, it says, So how did McKinley do? He began on the right path by owning up to what he did. We really couldn't get to this point without uh, you all's help with PJ, so I really appreciate that. McKinley said, Portia has been through some rough times in the last two months dealing with my infidelity, and I just want to apologize to everybody. We got a lot more work to do, but we are uh, family, so I think at the end of the day, I think it's very important we make a commitment to stick by each other during the downs and the root for each other doing the ups because the ups are easy and i'm like no dennis you just need to understand whether you want a relationship with portia and a marriage with portia and have a family because this whole thing about y'all family and y'all this and there y'all ain't even married yet y'all boyfriend and girlfriend come on anything can happen it's when the stuff gets hit the fan when you become married and you don't have all this stuff in place because then it'd be like well i don't want you no more i'm finna sue you i'm finna get an alimony i'm finna get child support it would have been better if you stayed with me and be faithful because now i'm finna take it all <laughs> And that was Dennis scared. That's why he said, oh, we ain't married yet. Prenup, prenup. Did you hear me, girl? Prenup. So, because Lord would be the first one to be saying, take that joke for all he got. Take him for everything and then some. Okay. Uh, leave him butt-ass naked dry in the funds department. And, you know, that was just crazy, 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 like I said. Um... But he, you know, <laughs> he playing his cards right. Portia just out there yonder somewhere thinking. So, um, that, that was just crazy. But anyway, <laughs> he gonna go back to the article. Uh, but he's thanking them for being there when he couldn't be there because he was sitting there, didn't know how to approach them from the get-go of coming back, admitting his faults and trying to move on because Dennis is the type of person, if he don't apologize, he don't want to hear about it no more. He don't want to hear about if he slip up or when he slip up. He, he don't want to be bothered with it. He want to be able to do what he want to do when he want to do it, and Porsche just pretty much got to, you know, sit there and take it. Um, but going back to the article, it said... Uh, the humility nearly took a wrong turn. Uh, when McKinley questioned Lauren and Diane about why he had been blocked, uh, claiming they took things too far. Now, I do admit, uh, and I'm on Dennis' side, 
when it came to, you know, whatever was happening between him and Portia, and Portia trying to block the baby from being uh, with her dad and, and, you know, the mama and the sister. But when I can see, well, if she has the baby girl, PJ, too, you can't do that, you know, because anything can happen, and he may need to get his little girl for whatever reason. Who knows? Uh, so that's why I was thinking that Diane and Lauren was just doing a little bit too much. Um, the property of that child belongs to the dad and the mom, not the siblings or the mother-in-law or, you know, the Portia's mom, you know, her maternal mom. You, you can't do that. I mean, you, you're getting too invested. That's still their child. They still have to make decisions for that child. Uh, and then again, Portia is not even married to the man. So, I'm like, Miss Diane, Miss Lauren, y'all were wrong on that. Because if y'all had the child in y'all possession, y'all should have unblocked y'all phones. Just so he could check to see how his child was doing. Because it seems like he's involved a lot with her well-being. And he wants to make sure his girl, his only child is good and you know he don't want to, have to jump through all these hoops or what y'all believe about him or what y'all feel about him or how he treated Portia that's still his child so I mean if the law had to get involved the law would have been knocking at one of y'all doors that had the baby said turn the baby over to me because you ain't acting right and he is the father of the child and y'all really would have been upset then so I was glad Dennis did get them straight look I am the parent I don't care how you know, I may have cheated on Portia, I ain't hit Portia, I ain't uh, committed no domestic violence against her, so don't treat me like that, okay? Old adage, a man gonna cheat, you know how they always say, uh, just is what it is, but yeah, Diane did go too far, so I'm like, I need Diane and Lauren to pull their asses back and just be the roles that they need to play. Sister and mama, niece and grandmama, that's it. And all these other feelings y'all have towards Dennis, just let them roll on down behind your back or something. But anyway, going back to the article, um, Williams quickly set McKinley straight. You understand why these decisions were made because the elephant in the room is you, Williams said. You had done something to the family. Uh, no, Porsche, he did something to you. He didn't do nothing to Lauren specifically or your mama okay he didn't he didn't do none of that so chill baby chill we don't want to go into that you don't quite understand those legalities because you're thinking with your heart you're thinking with your emotions no they can protect you from dennis but when it comes to that child no they need to be a little bit more respectful and they don't need to keep the child if they feel some kind of which way about dennis being in the presence you see what i'm saying because if he wanted to come on their property to get his child it would be a shame that he had to call the popo to come do that but he had all legal rights because he didn't like physically abuse you Portia he didn't do anything to his daughter so upright they had to get the child to him if he really wanted to press on that issue uh, so Portia yeah, you need to calm down and get your emotions out of it and deal with, with what is truly facts on that issue but um you know, she goes on to explain that you did something to me. That means my family was going to react in the way that was appropriate in protecting me. Uh, you do understand that the lines were naturally drawn because at the point, at that particular point, we didn't even think you and I would be getting back together. That's a great point to bring up, Portia. But you got to understand, it doesn't matter even if that were to have happened. He still has the opportunity to do for his child and to see his child. And ain't no... Uh, law is gonna make you make him be punished because he cheated on you girl come on now talk to your mama about that because she ain't even with her your dad she's a statistic like she eloquently said you know on the show so yeah Portia, you are on that statistic rail of being cheated on but you know like I said you going in with blinders on on what this man is really about and how he really gets down so you may be still a statistic coming all right but going back to the article it said um so why would my family be still reaching out to you at a point in time where they really had told me that oh op that opened the door for lauren and diane to weigh in as both laid into mckinley and lauren pointed out her own experiences with unfaithfulness in a relationship i told you about my issues with my daughter's dad and how hurtful it was for me to have 
to be a single mom. Lauren said, how could you do that to her? I felt like you knew better. Added Diane, she said, I did not wait all these years for my daughter to become a baby mama. And when all this happened, it just felt like here, I thought she had found Mr. Right. And now they're broken up. So now she's going to join the rest of us in the statistics. I didn't want to speak to you because I was hurt. That's all. Okay, so Diane pretty much eloquently spoke on her little deal with that as well. And I was like, okay, Diane, Diane, come, you know, get your little cold compress because you're getting outlandish too. All right, we don't ever want to see our children uh, hurt or whatever, but we know we did what we had to do and our children didn't listen to us when we were saying, okay, you know, I experienced this before. Uh, seems kind of familiar here. I think you need to back up. I think you need to ask a little bit more questions. I need. I think you need to build up some walls on your heart because this man don't seem like he's saying or, or, or doing what he's saying to us who he is. His actions are different. They're not lined up. They're not straight. They're not kosher. So I, I need you to beware. But now, of course, when I then got pregnant by the man and, and had the baby and, and, and then she called herself want to get married but ain't no type of Merit has come to pass. I mean, she could have eloped. She could have went to the uh, the uh, Justice of the Peace. Uh, had a small ceremony where it was just family, intimate family there with her. He didn't do it. Neither one of them are doing that now. So, I don't know. <sighs> no, I, I, I really don't understand. But anyway, it just is what it is. But it goes on to say, from there, Williams decided to voice her frustrations to McKinley's mother, Gina, who was also at the family meeting. Your mom didn't call me. I felt like I shouldn't have gotten a different, I should have gotten a different type of support as well. Williams said, telling Gina to me, that don't feel like family. That feels like you were, were his mom and that is it. And you were taking his side. Uh, we've all been in the wrong, Mama Gina said, has been very swift about coming in and letting me know I'm wrong, Williams told audiences, so I just would have felt like in this situation, um, Dennis had to had wronged me, you would have jumped in and said, like, uh, no, he's doing wrong as well, but because his mom was just as invested as my mom was, Mama Gina was quick to apologize to Williams. We were all taken away by how this occurred, she said. After hearing the entire story, I fussed at him every day. I wanted him to understand the repercussions of what had been done. At the same time, I didn't know where to step in at. Like, Mama Gina, stop lying. You could have just called Portia up and said, girl, I'm getting on his ass every day. I hope y'all try to go to counsel and work this situation out because y'all both good people but let it be known i told him he was wrong i'm getting on his behind every day and when things get better give me a call that's how she could have said and she could say i'm so sorry portia that my um son treated you this way bam but she gonna tell me she didn't know how to step in here she know how to step in when other things start to ha you know uh hand out or be out for the count you know how to do get on portia's ass then especially with this prenup but you sent girls and sit down sit down you all into your feelings too but anyway her apology helped Williams, and in the end, everyone appeared to agree to work towards forgiveness. I think we're at a point now where we are figuring things out, McKinley said. Today is about an olive branch that I'm extending to fix this family. And Diane agreed. When it's all, when it's a real true family and a true man like yourself, you see how it affects people who you think it didn't even affect. And I appreciate the fact that you didn't just bum back together and act like nothing happened because something <coughs> did happen, she said. If you're not ready to be a family, it doesn't mean nothing. That's why I want you to be, uh, I want y'all to go to counseling because we want you to build a good foundation that you skipped over in the beginning. I think you're all doing what you need to do to get to the right place, Lauren added. And if one of you gives up, then it's just over. Ultimately, ultimately uh, Williams was happy. Us putting our relationship back together after this is going to be, and it's the hardest thing we've ever done, she said, but we've got engaged, we've got we were told we were pregnant. Wait a minute, hold up. We got told we were pregnant together. We had this pregnancy together. He's like my best friend. I just had to trust and believe with my heart. Uh, what I felt in my heart, you know, I just keep saying it's a work in progress. And I'm going to trust that he's going to keep putting his actions forward. Then it's showing me that my family feelings is important, she added. I just never had anybody to care about me and how I felt about my sister and whatnot. Oh, y'all, yeah, hold on. Let me call you right back. Okay. okay. Um, and that was pretty much uh, the video. 
and and the ins and outs that Yahoo got a chance to eloquently put together. I couldn't have said it no better uh, myself if I had wrote the piece. It's just that, like, you know, sometimes you can't include your family with all the details, especially the negative, nasty details, unless you are not going to get back with that particular woman or man. Now, if it's over, it's done with, whatever, then, yeah, give them a brief synopsis of what happened and, you know, get yourself together and build and go forward and be great. But if you have the intentions of getting back with the person that broke your heart, tore your heart to pieces, and you still want to hang on with them, it's best that you don't put your family in or don't really put your family in it at all keep your business to yourself unless we're talking about domestic abuse whether it's verbal or physical then get out and there's no looking back i don't care how much counseling whatever it is because you should have saw the signs uh and got counseling prior to hooking up as a family or even being in a relationship uh, if it was valuable, uh, uh, viable to the both of you. But that's all I have for this particular um, little excerpt of a video. Y'all get down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it. Put your comments down there. Like I know y'all always do. But just be respectful. Okay. And again, happy Martin Luther King Day. Enjoy yourselves. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my videos. Okay. And I'll see y'all next video. Okay. Bye-bye.